Good afternoon. The other day I came across a video on YouTube that I thought did a really excellent job of getting you inside the mind of a Jehovah's Witness and the way they think about their organization. And I could really see my former self in the person I want to highlight. The YouTube channel that this video comes from is Cat Craze, and I'm not going to be commenting on the overall content of the video. I really want to just highlight a few seconds of it, and thankfully Cat Craze was gracious enough to give me permission to do this. The context for this clip is that you have a man approaching a group of Jehovah's Witnesses who are doing their cart witnessing, and he starts to address problems in the organization and asks the question, why would you want to be in a cult like that? And what you're about to see is how this woman responded. And afterwards, I'm going to have a little bit of a commentary on her response. Like that. Well, we're not in a cult because we, we Jesus Christ is our, our leader. Well, you, you, you think, you think. So the proof that this woman goes to that she is not in a cult is that Jesus Christ is their leader. What does she mean by that? Notice she doesn't say, Jesus is my leader, as in, I follow Jesus just like any other Christian. No, she is making a much more specific claim than that. She is saying that Jesus Christ is the leader of the specific organization that she is in that Jesus Christ leads the Watchtower organization, that only Jehovah's Witnesses truly have Jesus Christ as their leader because everyone else is in the wrong organization or failing to be in the right organization. First of all, the question is, is this a unique claim? Are Jehovah's Witnesses the only ones that claim that Jesus Christ is their leader? Well, I recently had a former member of a group called The Way of Yahweh, Yahushua, reach out to me. And I hope to interview him on this channel at some point. But he directed me to their official website. The whole website is fascinating and disturbing, long-winded and convoluted. Um, but I want to highlight just a portion of the About Us page. First of all, you need to know that they're obsessed with the name of God, and correct pronunciations. So when you hear Yahushua, that is Jesus. That's the way they say Jesus. They feel that that is the only correct way. So again, on their About Us page, under the heading, What Are We? It reads, A relatively very small group of people he chose among a people numbering as the sands of the sea who he called to serve our mighty ones with all that which he gives us humbly, and who don't seek to promote themselves, rather to pro promote him and his truth, who has been so kind to all of us. We share in common the spirit of truth which was promised to us by Yahushua, that his greatness would send to us by calling on his name. And dropping down to the end of the paragraph, the last sentence says, anyone ceasing to profess his name and identify him will not stay a part of this spiritual tribe. Then the next subheading is, what are we not? Notice, we are not your leaders. Yahushua is your leader. And one day every human will accept this. We are not modeled after the typical Christian model it evolved to, where a group of people hire someone to do their scriptural research, and everyone has to sit down in their pew quietly as they are taught information with conforms to their traditions according to their denominations, according to their seminarians, lest they offend their upper leaders. One is our commander, and that is Yahushua, as he said. As we are accountable to the truth according to him, does any of this sound familiar? Are you persuaded by any of this? Who do you think is leading this group? Are they being uniquely led by Jesus to bring people to the truth? What prevents any human leader from asserting that Jesus is the real leader of their group? 
Can you ask Jesus to confirm this claim? Can you see how much power you're giving to a group if you accept the claim that they are led by Jesus? In Stephen Hessen's book, Freedom of Mind, towards the beginning, he highlights common cult scenarios. It reads, To give you an idea of the variety of situations where I've seen concerns about undue influence, I've compiled a sampling of some of the desperate stories I've heard. I highlighted certain passages to emphasize the most important concepts. We will return to these themes at the end of the chapter. Names and identifying features have been changed to protect these people's privacy. Case 1. Son in a Bible Cult. It says, Mother, our 18-year-old son Jeffrey is a college freshman. A few months ago, he told us he's going to Bible studies. He rails on and on about how all other churches are dead and unspiritual. He wants to quit school and work full-time bringing people into his group. Stephen Hessen. To make an assessment, we'll need to know the name of the group and the leader. Father. I did ask him who was the leader, and he said Jesus Christ. Stephen Hessen. That's a common answer. Ask your son who founded it as a legal entity. Who is the local leader? Who is the worldwide leader? Let's take each of those three questions that Stephen Hessen asks there and apply them to Jehovah's Witnesses. Who founded it as a legal entity? Well, you probably know that the Watchtower organization, or the Watchtower, was founded by Charles Taze Russell. At his death in 1916, there was a takeover of the Watchtower by Joseph Rutherford. Now, depending on who you ask, either one of these could be called the founder. I personally refer to Joseph Rutherford as the founder of the organization. He's the one that came up with the name Jehovah's Witnesses, and he's the one that really structured the organization into what we recognize today with kind of two classes of Christians and a very authoritarian leadership structure. This is also the person that Jehovah's Witnesses point to that was in leadership at the time that Jesus supposedly chose this organization in 1919. So, human leader, Joseph Rutherford. Next question, who is the local leader? Well, my question for Jehovah's Witnesses would be, who is the one that decides whether you are repentant? Repentant enough to keep your family in your life? Who has the power to take your family away from you if they deem that you are not repentant of something they consider a serious sin? Who are the ones that come to the hospital when you are at death's door? and reminds you of which medical procedures you can and cannot accept. Now I know every church has some kind of pastoral representation. That's what churches do. But this kind of control over people's lives is unusual and inappropriate. So that's local leadership. Finally, who is the worldwide leader? Do I even have to say? The worldwide leaders of Jehovah's Witnesses is the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses. They are the self-styled, faithful, and discreet slave. They claim that Jesus chose them, starting in 1919, on to our day, to be his representative, faithful, and discreet slave class on earth. There's a parable where Jesus talks about a faithful slave, they say that is a prophecy that points specifically to us. In the February 15, 2009 Watchtower on page 27, it says, Since Jehovah God and Jesus Christ completely trust the faithful and discreet slave, should we not do the same? This is what circular reasoning looks like. Think about it. We should trust the faithful and discreet slave class. Why? Because Jehovah and Jesus do. How do you know? Because at Matthew 24, 45, it says that Jesus chose them as his faithful slave. How do you know that this parable is actually a prophecy that refers to the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses? 
because the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses told me that's what it means. How do you know that you can trust the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses? Which takes us back to the beginning. We should trust the faithful and discreet slave class, because Jehovah and Jesus do, and on and on. This is not something that you can resolve with evidence. It's just an assertion that's made. Any organization can do that, can make a claim that is unfalsifiable, and use fear tactics like we'll take your family away if you disagree to keep you believing it. I'm gonna let you watch this video one more time and you decide, is this woman in a cult? Well, we're not in a cult because we, we Jesus Christ is our, our leader. Well, you, 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 think, you think,